I've had multiple posts reach over 100,000 impressions on LinkedIn, and today I'm going to show you how you can do the same thing. Now, a little bit about myself, I only became active on LinkedIn less than one year ago with aspirations to get a job working in cybersecurity. As an entry-level professional, I didn't have the luxury of decades worth of experience behind my name or even one certification that was relevant in my industry. I used to get excited when I only got 100 impressions, but now I'm getting 1,000 impressions within just a few hours of virtually every single post that I make. The LinkedIn algorithm works differently than other platforms like Facebook or Instagram, but it's essential to remember this one thing. You shouldn't be trying to create posts for the algorithm. You need to be creating posts for your audience. Before we talk about going viral, let's establish what that means. Essentially, you don't get 100,000 impressions on a post because 100,000 people are in your network or you just have this massive following to begin with. It also doesn't mean that 100,000 people just randomly decide to look you up on LinkedIn that day and go visit your profile. When you get a high amount of impressions, but you don't have a high amount of followers, it means that your post is appearing in everybody's feed. Now, how do you get your post to appear in everybody's feed? Well, that's when it comes down to your network. You see, when you get started on LinkedIn, you're not gonna have very many people that are following you or even interested in what you have to say. But the first people that are always going to be the ones that see your post in their feed are those that you are directly connected with and typically that you have the most conversations. Myself, at this point in time, I've got almost 3,000 connections and I've got almost 5,000 people following. Now, of those two to 3,000 connections that I have on my feed, most of them are posting on a regular basis. But typically, I see about the same people in my feed over a long period of time. Now, why is that? Well, it's because those are the people that I regularly interact with that LinkedIn knows that's who I wanna see posts from. Whether that be people that I am directly messaging or whether that's people that I'm frequently talking to them in the comment sections of either their posts or they're frequently talking to me in the comment sections of my posts. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you wanna gain a large amount of people that are following you and that are seeing your posts and that you're typically one of the first people that they see in their feed, then that means that you need to be active on other people's posts, not just your own. You see, it isn't necessarily that much about what you're posting or the content that you're posting. When we look and see at some of the posts of mine that have just blown up recently, you'll look that only one of the two that I'm gonna show you today was really put that much effort into the post itself. A lot of what it takes is just developing your name so that when people see the name, for my example, Austin Dennis, there's a little bit more to it than just a random name that they see on the screen. I'm actually somebody that people know, somebody that people are communicating with, someone that has had conversations with people underneath their own posts that they genuinely enjoy talking to, at least I hope. Now, these comments that you might put on somebody else's post shouldn't just be something like, interesting, or that's cool. You know, talk to them in a way that's an actual engaging comment that sparks up a discussion or sparks up a conversation. You know, if you really want to get to know somebody and get to talk about them, don't be afraid when you see a post that you disagree with to share your perspective on why you disagree with it. Because typically, posts where you're disagreeing with something are going to spark up some kind of conversation. Now look, don't get political on this platform. Don't start diving into issues that are genuinely going to offend somebody. But when you have a discussion pop up about something that's going on in your industry, don't be afraid to jump in and have a conversation and talk about why you disagree with something. Some of the best friends that I have on this platform that I talk to on a regular basis, I first started talking to them because we disagreed about something and we started talking to each other and having a professional dialogue to change each other's minds. Now, the thing is, from that point forward, when we're regularly communicating and we're regularly talking to each other, whose posts do you think that I see the first time that I open up LinkedIn every single day? time. At the end of the day, the important thing is that you initially build up an audience of people that are specific to your industry. You see, from there, you need to find out what your audience is interested in. Now, here's the thing. The person that gets to decide what your audience is interested in is actually you. Does that not make sense? Let me explain. You see, your audience is there for you. 
They're there to follow you and they're there to see the things that you have to say. Whether that be because they think that it's genuinely valuable, maybe they're just interested in you, maybe they're just curious to follow along and see what you do, or maybe they're just your friend and they care about you. You see, where people shoot themselves in the foot is say that someone's a nurse, but then one day they post about being a nurse, the next day they post about being a wildlife photographer, the next day they post about hiking, the next day they post about swimming, the next day they post about politics, and then they sit back and wonder, why does nobody care about my nursing content? Well, because you are sending mixed messages for what your content even is in the first place. LinkedIn is about finding a professional network that's centered around your name. And you basically have a network of all these different people. And then all these different people have an expectation of, you. I don't give the advice that you should just never talk about anything other than your industry on LinkedIn or else it'll damage your brand. No one's gonna like you. No one's gonna react to your posts. That's not the way that it works. But just don't be surprised when you never tend to your main audience and the main thing that you want people to know you for that people aren't interested in or that people don't see your content on a regular basis because you don't have something that you specify in. Myself personally, I'm a huge Cincinnati Bengals fan. And every once in a while, I just can't help but post something about the Bengals on LinkedIn. But you know what? No one ever reacts to those posts and nobody ever will. I don't care. It's not for them. It's for me. It's something that I enjoy. But if every day I just sat back and posted about the Bengals and once a month talked about cybersecurity, I can't let myself get upset or frustrated when no one cares about my cybersecurity content. So if you're willing to dedicate an enormous amount of time into posting regular content about a specific industry on a regular basis, you will eventually see results. Now, how to form the perfect LinkedIn post? Well, let's look at a couple examples of mine. So. The figures that you saw in the thumbnail of this video are legitimate figures that I have for my YouTube channel. Now this would be the smaller of the two posts that I would say went viral, meaning that I got over 100,000 impressions and a lot of people saw it. And this is a post that I made just after I graduated Western Governors University. And all that I did was essentially break down specific financial values of the value that I got out of the program. And I'm not going to read the whole entire post because there are a lot of words here, but essentially my industry in cybersecurity is flooded with all kinds of certifications that lots of different people want. And some of them that employers are specifically looking for and preferring candidates that have certain certifications over others. Now, especially breaking into a help desk type of role for cybersecurity, A+, Network+, plus, Security+, plus are going to be great jobs that people want you to get. And then there's a lot of cybersecurity professionals that are specifically interested in the CISA+, plus, the Pentest+, plus, the SSCP, the CCSP certifications. And if you're not familiar with cybersecurity, don't worry about it. But the point is that there are lots of people that were interested in getting these certifications, but there are two different things that people have a hard time with when it comes to these certifications. Number one is learning the material, understanding the material, and then being able to sit down in a proctored exam or in a testing environment outside of your home and pass the exam. That's difficult. The other thing is, is that certifications cost a lot of money. The A plus core one and core two exam is almost $500. And this is like the entry level IT certification. So the people that just wanna work in a help desk job that barely make any money at all starting out have to usually put an upfront investment of $500 down. Not everybody has $500 to put down on certifications, let alone $4,000 worth of certifications. But at the same time, a lot of people want to earn a lot of money with certifications and they want to be able to add these certifications to their resumes to stand out in a job interview and do that. And so what I did was show, hey, I was able to get all of these certifications way less of a price than I did. And basically what I did is I showed the total. I used some emojis that just keep someone's eyes on the post and don't let them just scroll on by. For whatever reason, people just need something to keep them engaged on a longer post, so emojis can do that for you. Now, you can definitely do overkill and make people just think that it's fake and, you know, an annoying post. But for this case, I use them just as dollar signs because I'm talking about money. 
it's green, it stands out on the page, and it's just keeping people engaged and seeing what they're doing. And then I showed the total price of it. And then I talked about the amount total as if you were to fail certain certifications that WGU was willing to pay $7,465. And that didn't even include all of the different training and things that they you know, put into it also, which was thousands upon thousands of dollars. And then I talked about myself, how I was able to complete the entire degree program in just one term. And since I filled out the FAFSA form, I was able to receive the Pell Grant. Thankfully, I only had to pay $852 to the college to do that whole entire degree. And so I summed it all up by saying I only had to pay $852 to get over $4,000 worth of certifications. And I was able to do it quickly. And then I basically just shared a couple videos on my YouTube channel that talked about how I did the whole entire degree in one term and then a method video for studying for certifications. And I just had, again, you know, a really crappy photo that was just blurry in a photo of my desk and all the certifications that I had on the wall and my degree next to it. And it blew up because of the fact that people related to this. People are interested in getting these certifications and then people are interested in knowing how to do it in a cost-effective way and an efficient way. I covered all of that in basically one post and what people can see is a photo that has all the certifications on the wall and has you know, basically a testimony from someone saying how they did it. Now for the largest post I've ever had, this is it right here. And it doesn't look like much, but there's a whole lot more that goes into this than what meets the eye initially. Now, if you ask me, did you post this and know that almost 130,000 people were going to see it, that it was going to get, you know, over 2,600 likes and all these different reposts and things like that? No, I had no idea that that was going to happen. However, after it happened, I wasn't necessarily surprised. Now, part of the reason for that is because my audience at the time was mostly people that were either in Western Governors University or people that had already gone through and graduated Western Governors University, or they were professionals in the cybersecurity community that had been there for a long time and just were going to be happy to see another person graduating their degree. Now, up to this post, I had been posting virtually every single week about how I'm inching closer and closer to graduation. One of the other things about WGU's program is that it included tons of professional level certifications that you earned throughout the program and got to post. And so I got to the point where it was almost every single week I'm sharing, got a new certification, got a new certification, got a new certification. And it was like every single one just got more attention because it was like the excitement was building up that, hey, another person is getting closer to graduating. And hey, this guy is doing it in a really quick pace. That's not as normal as other people might do it. And so it was just building up a lot of attention. And essentially, this degree was the culmination of everything that had taken place up to this point and being able to put it in a nice picture frame and put it on the wall. And man, that feels good. And there are a lot of people that are either working towards that, that are someone that has experienced that already, or maybe someone that's considering doing that. And basically, everybody that has a college degree or everybody that's working towards a college degree knows that feeling that you get when you graduate and when you get the you know diploma and you get to put it up on the wall and you get to feel good and all that was what it was now listen when it comes to crafting the perfect linkedin post it isn't so much about what you're saying or what the post contains but about formatting it in a way that the audience is going to see and that as they're scrolling through their phones and looking through their day that your post catches their eye and they're willing to stop and check it out for a second. Now, one of the easiest things that I see people mess up on all the time is not taking advantage of the way that LinkedIn actually displays posts in the feed itself. The way that it's going to happen is that typically the first two lines of your post are going to be shown and then a little see more. What you need to do 
at the very beginning is let the first two lines of every LinkedIn post you make just have an engaging statement that's gonna make people interested enough to read the rest of your content and see whatever it says. In addition to that, do not write an essay for people to read because most of the time they're not going to be interested in it. I have made the mistake of spending way too much time crafting the perfect post on LinkedIn that went so in depth on the technical aspects of the things that I do and spent so long just writing out the most amazing post that it ended up reaching the character limit multiple times and I had to delete a bunch of parts of it and then get it back together. And then finally, I ended up getting right to the character limit, setting the post to schedule, putting a nice graphic at the bottom that was gonna catch people's attention. And you know what I found? Most people don't care. Because when you just load a boatload of information into people and they see it, it doesn't mean that they're actually going to be interested in watching or reading any of it because of the fact that you think about the person that's sitting and scrolling through LinkedIn. Sure, LinkedIn is a professional network, but at the same time, it's people that are sitting on their phone and they're scrolling through the same way that they do Facebook, the same way that they do Instagram, and the same way that they do TikTok or whatever social media platform they're on. If you post a book worth of information, likely the person that's just sitting on their couch scrolling through social media looking for whatever dopamine hit that they get when they're scrolling through LinkedIn, they're not going to be willing to stop and read it and look at it. Save the long form posts for a blog that you're going to have dedicated readers that are coming to that spot and interested in a long form version of content that you have to say. It's not necessarily that the people just don't care or don't have any desire to read any of this content. It's that that isn't the right setting and typically it's not going to be the correct audience. In terms of crafting the perfect piece of content or the perfect bit, there isn't something that you should just directly do that's gonna guarantee 100,000 impressions on your next post. What it comes down to is consistently posting about a specific industry and zeroing in on that scope. Directing your audience into getting them to associate that you are associated with this industry. When people see my name on LinkedIn, they think of a few different things probably. They think about Western Governors University because I posted a lot about Western Governors University. And they think about cybersecurity because I post a lot about cybersecurity. Within that, of course, there are so many different things that I would say that I specialize in and that might make more up of me than what it is. But I have put that out there that look, hey, I'm the guy that went to WGU and graduated in six months. I'm the guy that has all these different certifications. I'm the guy that does cybersecurity and is interested in that. And that's what people know me from. What do people know you for? If I wanted to make a post next week that generated 10,000 views, I would probably post something along the lines of advice for certifications or how you can do WGU the same way that I did. And I guarantee you it would get attention just because that's the way that people know me and that's what people work for. You know, as we wind this video down, let me just ask you this question. Why do you even want to go viral on LinkedIn in the first place? Going viral on LinkedIn isn't necessarily all that it's cracked out to be. Sometimes people think, oh, I'll go viral on LinkedIn and then I'll get a job offer. Or hundreds of thousands of people will see my post, which will mean that 10% of those people will go onto my profile and they might look and see the certifications that I have. They might look to see that I'm open to work and then they might offer me a job. And in reality, that isn't how it works. Sure, having a good LinkedIn profile is a nice thing to attach to the bottom of your resume. But especially where most people are sitting at today, where they're getting on LinkedIn, the reason that they're there is because they're an entry level professional like I was earlier this year, trying to get their first job, trying to get in the industry. But in reality, that's just not the way that it works today. Maybe you'll hear one random story that's, oh, I built this massive LinkedIn profile. And then I had these recruiters reaching out to me as an entry level professional and offering me a great salary as an entry level professional just because of my graphics design skills when I'm a cybersecurity professional that has nothing to do with graphic design and building up a following on social media. And I'm using cybersecurity because that's primarily what my audience is on YouTube and primarily what my following is on LinkedIn. But the thing is, 
in your profession, you need to genuinely ask yourself if social media viral posts have anything to do with you as a professional. For me, I'm fortunate enough that in my career, I've had a background where I was working with graphical design and video editing and photo editing and audio editing and all of the different things in the Adobe Creative Cloud. And so I can leverage that to help my social media presence on LinkedIn that just gets me connected with different people and allows me to talk to different people. And maybe it hypothetically to some companies would put a little bit more legitimacy behind my name when I've got a large following on LinkedIn. And yes, more people know about me, but the honest truth is going viral on LinkedIn does not mean what people think it means. And if you're watching this video as an entry level professional and you're wanting to go viral on LinkedIn so that you can get a brand new job or so that you can have a recruiter reach out to you and give you a chance, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. But if you're genuinely someone that's just trying to get a new job, going viral on social media is not the way to do it. You need to worry about learning how to do the job that you're asked to do. Unfortunately, there are people that have dozens more followers than me on LinkedIn and are having a hard time getting into a job because they've unfortunately believed the lie that putting all of your eggs into social media and focusing on building a brand is going to get you this wonderful job that you're desiring. It's just not true. Your focus needs to be on making serious, individual, one-on-one -on -one connections with people. If 100,000 people see your posts, that they're not decision makers and they can't do anything for you and your industry at that point in time, you as an entry-level professional, what does it really matter in the first place? What matters is that you need to have one decision maker, one person in a company that you want to work for, see your stuff and worry about it. So my advice to you, don't worry about going viral on LinkedIn. Don't worry about going and trying to make the next viral post and form the post that's gonna get to 100,000 impressions and it's gonna have thousands of likes and thousands of comments and hundreds of reposts. It's not all that it's cracked out to be. My advice to you, Work hard at developing the skills that you need to do the job in your industry and make direct one-on-one -on -one connections with people that actually can help you and people that matter. LinkedIn is a wonderful place to build a wonderful professional network and have real good discussions on a daily basis with whatever industry that you're interested in but it's not a guarantee for a job. Unfortunately, that just isn't the way that it works. But either way, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you got something out of it. If you're interested, check out some more content on my YouTube channel, especially if you're into cybersecurity, I think you'll find that interesting.